What's up guys? So today I'm going to have Super Smash Brothers Tournament Fighter Evan Wong here on the show to tell you guys his thoughts on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I interviewed him, talked to him about the Waluigi controversy, and he's also going to talk about how he feels that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is a much different game than the previous Wii U and 3DS installment. So I'm really glad that I was able to get, to get somebody that has a real eye for talking about fighting games particularly smash so thank you to my friend patrick for introducing me to evan and i hope you guys enjoy this episode so yeah it's so nice to meet you evan nice to meet you. Thank, yeah thank you for coming on the show so the guys i'm watching i'll just um give an explainer of why we're here so my buddy patrick who runs a youtube channel called doomsday um We've met, I've recommended his channel on my main YouTube page, and I was starting to talk to him about, hmm, maybe we should do a Super Smash Brothers Ultimate video, and he recommended you, Evan, so, yeah, so maybe um, introduce yourself. You, he said that you played in Smash tournaments before, right? Yes. Uh, my name is Evan Hong. I also go by Arma in the Smash community. I've been playing competitively since November of 2016, I would like to say. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've I started near the beginning of it. It's a little bit after Smash for Wii U actually came out. Maybe about a few months, I would say. I forget. I honestly forget when it actually came out. But yeah, I've been playing for quite a while. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Have you played the other games in the Smash franchise? Uh, I dabbled in Brawl for a bit. It wasn't exactly my style. A little bit too slow. And then I played Melee for a while. But after a bit, my hand started hurting, so I to stop touching it. <laughs> yeah, because um, I've actually played um, all, well, it's technically five Smash games up to this point. Smash 64. Melee was actually the game that basically introduced me to the world of Nintendo. Like, I remember when I was a little kid, I was just starting to play GameCube, and there was this really cool game, and, you know, it's all these Nintendo characters. Like, that was pretty much how I was introduced to them all. And, you know, of course, every Christmas, my cousins, um, my cousin Andrew, if he's watching this video, here's a shout out. Um, has gotten me Brawl and then Smash for Wii U. We had to buy, um, me and my sister had to buy the 3DS version on our own, but it's all in good fun. And I think for this discussion, I'm going to have you do most of the talking since you're, you've are you played in tournaments. I'm like a super casual guy when it comes to Smash. Like, I'm one of those people where I'm just like, uh, mash buttons and then hopefully I win. Like, I just, I strictly <laughs> play for the fun of it all. So, I wanted to bring you on to talk about Smash because as of especially recently, it's come under a lot of fire. And for a lot of reasons I've heard, most notably the, what like, the Waluigi <laughs> instead, you know, everybody has been begging and begging for waluigi to be in the game so um evan is that the only issue that's worth talking about or are there other controversies regarding uh, the ultimate? <laughs> not really that's like the i guess like the general topic is that biggest issue is that a lot of people want these characters into the game like really badly but sometimes designs doesn't work out or maybe like they don't want to put the character in or like maybe they have different ideas. So like, if, for instance, Piranha Plant, a lot of people are upset about it. I'm slightly upset about it, but I'm not going to like grill someone into the ground for it. It's like, yeah, it's random. I wasn't expecting it. No one really wanted the character, but at the same time, it's like, this is a Sakurai game, so you have to respect the decision. Like, yeah, he made this game. Let him do what he wants. So you can't really get too pissed about that. But yeah, it's like, yeah, what would you want to be in? People wanted, like, Gino, Isaac. I'm kind of upset about that one. It hurts a little bit. And it's still, like, this Piranha Plant got in. So I, it's understandable why people are upset. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, you got to respect his... It's his game. If you wanted these characters, you have to find a way to do it on your own. But otherwise, yeah, you can't, you can't really do too much about that. Yeah, so, yeah, I've especially been seeing on Twitter, especially a lot of posts that have been attacking Sakurai, I'll actually start with, this one was really bad, and for this video, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, I'll show screenshots, but I'm not gonna link them down below, because I don't want people, not that I know any of my subscribers are gonna go harass them, but just in case, I don't want anybody, you know, going, using those links to go after Sakurai, but one... In particular, I'll read here, it says, quote, Smash fans love to say we don't deserve Sakurai, and I agree. We don't deserve a biased, ignorant scrub lord that keeps pushing his shitty preferences before those of his fans. We deserve better. If that idiot wants to break so bad, he can retire. Fuck that guy. 
you know, I've been seeing those tweets quite a lot. And the weird thing about them is they don't even exactly say why they're angry. They're just, you know, taking it really personally and, you know, calling Sakurai, you know, every name in the book. So is it only because of Waluigi or... Mm, no, so... That's the annoying part. The one bad, I guess, so I've been in the Smash community for quite a while, so I can say with confidence. The one bad thing is that compared to other fighting game communities, the Smash people are very spoiled and kind of childish. It's like the commentators in Smash are like kind of laid back in like their word, or not laid back. They're a little bit more like nit nitpicky on their words. They don't say, tend to say the like, more slangs like "fuck you, bitch" and all that jazz. While in other games like Dragon Ball, for example. The main commentators will say that stuff like no, no holds bar, like besides maybe like a few words like hard hard on or hard end and hard R and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But besides that, their commentators kind of go do as they want, talk how they want, and their people are fine. But if you hear any of that in a Smash commentator, never-ending flood of people are trying to roast them for that. And at the same time, it's like yeah, the ideal is that so for them they think they have that really hard mindset. Oh, the customer's always right. But in Smash, it's like, yeah, he does listen to the fans, evidently, as why there were nerfs, patches, buffs, and whatnot. He was like, yeah, okay, maybe this was a little dumb, so let's we'll switch this up. But at the same time, you have to remember, it's his game, so and it's his like ideal of the game. This is how he imagines it to be, and you kind of have to let him do with that. And that's one thing that I like, is that Sakurai is really good at keeping the competitive... Like, he has acknowledged the competitive scene. He's, there's a term called Umabura in Japan that Sakurai has attended. And there's even been a Smash thing, like official Smash tournaments where he's attended and watched. Yet, he's also very good at keeping, like, because the majority of the audience is highly casual. Like, the competitive fan base is a very tiny portion. Because what? How? It's only like millions of copies. Only a few thousand people go to big tournaments at a time. So, evidently, the biggest audience are still casuals, and he does a really good job at still keeping, like, that casual aspect. You have the items, you have Smash Meter now, which is fun for people, because you don't have to chase after a ball everywhere. So, characters that are stuck on the ground won't have a tough time catching it when they get thrown, like, 50 feet away. So, I like that aspect, and like I said earlier, you kind of have to let Sakurai do what he envisions the game to be. You can't be everything you want, because, like, that's hard to do. Because if you gave everyone what they wanted... This game would still be in development. Like, there's yeah. no stopping that. People want Goku, people want Ma or Waluigi, they want Gino, they want Isaac, they want all these people, Steve from Minecraft. It's just endless. So, like, you kind of have to think about, yeah, he's not going to put everyone in that everyone wants because once he does that, other people won't stop complaining. So at some point, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm putting my foot down. This is what's happening. And that's exactly what's happened for the DLC for this game, actually. Because for Smash 4, what happened is that they put out polls and val or ballots of favorite characters, and the number one got added to the game, and in this last case, Bayonetta. She was the number one in Japan, I think. I forget. I think she was number one in Japan or Europe. And then, like, number one worldwide, so she got added to the game. But this time around, Sakurai said that the five DLC characters that are being added to Smash Ultimate have been cited purely by Nintendo. No ballots, no polls. And it's like, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. It's their game. Let them try to make the game feel as they int originally intended it to be. So that's where I feel that's going. I'm fine with that, honestly. It's like maybe yeah, there are a few characters I kind of want into the game, but we don't know who they are yet, so we can't complain too much. And like I feel like Sakurai still enjoys like pleasing the people, so there probably is one or two characters that we might get into the game that people have been requesting for a long time. All right. And who do you think those characters be? I actually read an article last night that said that. Reggie fils made the Nintendo of America president said that Sakurai is well aware that people want Waluigi, but it's really up to him if he wants to put it in. So, who do you think we can expect in the DLC packs? Uh, see, that's hard because normally there's a precedent of a character, if they're an assist trophy or like something else, normally they're not in the game. I haven't seen that being broken yet, but that is a possibility. I'm expecting another Fire Emblem character regardless of people's dismay, because they normally put in characters that are coming from a new game to help advertise it. That's what they did in Melee. They put Roy and Mart to advertise Fire Emblem because it's kind of dying in the Japanese area. So there's like, hey, let's toss in this game, maybe over by the American scene, and it kind of blew up in popularity, more specifically Awakening and Fates. But 
So besides like a fire character, I can't really say too much because it's Sakurai and Nintendo has evidently has the president of just tossing characters out of the blue. You have a Square Enix rep who was really stubborn with their characters in Cloud. We have Capcom. And then we have like people even like Rare has been saying that, yeah, we, we were fine with putting Banjo in the game. So we could get Banjo Kazooie in the game for all we know. And it's like it's hard to it's hard to guess what they're gonna come with because there's so many companies that are in the tent in the or in the Smash Bros. franchise. I see. And what do you think of the addition of spirits? Like I kind of like when I watched the Nintendo Direct last night for Smash Brothers, I kind of felt that they added spirits in as a way to sort of appease fans who want like every single character. Because when I was watching it, I even saw they were putting gonna like make characters and spirits that I never would have expected. The most notable I thought was Hal Emmerich from the Metal Gear Solid series. Which, but do you think the spirits is a good solution for that? Um. Kind of, it's it's a double-edged sword. Some people are like, yay, I can use my character somehow, and then other people are upset. It's like, why is he just a sticker? Why can't he be an actual playable character, like at least an assist trophy? Uh, I don't think it's too bad. They already had a system similar like that in Brawl, the stickers, if you remember those. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah they have the stickers in Brawl, and they have the custom movesets and custom uh, equipment in Smash 4 or Smash Wii U or 3DS. So the spirits isn't a little bit too far fetched. It's basically the same thing, a little bit differently done, but at, at the core, it's the same aspect of just kind of having these things to make the characters more diverse. Because in Smash Four specifically, the competitive scene, every character has a defined meta. There's wallers, people who keep people away from them. You have zoners who kind of want you to have specific spacing. Rushdowns who want to be in your face. You have grapplers who focus on grabbing you and whatnot. And the, I guess the point of those of stickers, spirits, and, like, the, the equipment is to kind of change the play style of a character. Because, like, for example, you can have Ganondorf, who's really, really, really slow, right? Yeah. But if you give him, like, a certain sticker or something, or a spirit in this case, all of a sudden you have a man who's running at you at the speed of light and is going to hit you like a truck. And that just completely changes the entire aspect of it. Because normally you'd want to sit around like Ganondorf and wait for people to run at you so you can punish them for doing something dumb or stupid. But in this case, if he's fast as all hell on the ground, you now have more opportunities to do stuff on your own without having to wait for opponents to mess up. So I guess that's the like kind of that 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 way because Smash Sakurai doesn't want it to be one like one thing, from what I can tell, or I'm assuming he wants it to be like okay, you can express yourself in your own way. That's why there's so many characters, there's so many to customize and design, especially the spirits now because they change aspects of each character. So it's like yeah, he kind of wants you to play the game as you want it to be. Not as, like, he wants you to stick with this one specific kind of playstyle, which is, I think, is evident because some characters in Smash for Wii U and 3DS have been completely changed in Smash Ultimate. A lot of characters have been knocked down a notch from, like, the top tiers and, like, whatnot. Some lower characters that haven't, that don't have as much power have been boosted quite significantly, so. So it's kind of a halfway point as far as it's a way of getting them all in. Like I was just thinking maybe the idea behind the stickers is like you said, if they just, you know, made them into playable characters, it would take, you know, a long time to develop because they have to make the obvious, you know, the different moves and so on and so forth. And also, like I said, some of these characters they pick for stickers wouldn't necessarily make the best characters, I would say. Like I really can't imagine, like I associate... I, can't, I know I kept bringing, bringing up Hal Emmerich from Metal Gear Solid, but I, um, are you familiar with the Metal Gear games, Evan? Not too much. I've been playing too much, but I can get, I can kind of guess what you're coming at. It's, yeah, it's hard to imagine characters or imagine characters moves. So, like examples, Duck Hunt. The only thing you do he does in that game is jump at birds and laugh at you when you miss at them. Mm -hmm. Yet they designed an entire move set for him. Same thing with Wii Fit Trainer. What the heck? They just gave her an entire move set. Like. There isn't much to work off of, and people kind of expect them to do things out of nowhere. And like you said earlier, or I said earlier, if they added every character that everyone wanted, development would take ages because they have to develop assets, they have to develop a stage, maybe some music, give some background to it, and all the movesets, which would take forever. Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember we were waiting. I know, I remember when I first heard of Brawl, for instance, it was at, I think it, I first heard of it like a year before the Wii launch, maybe 
or was it like one or two years before it finally came out? But I definitely remember thinking, oh, I'm super hyped for our new Super Smash Brothers. I really liked Melee, and then Brawl comes out. And then in 2011, when Nintendo shows off the Wii U the first time. Did you watch the E3 2011 conference where they showed off the Wii U for the first time? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, that was before I got into the competitive scene. Mm, I see, because I remember at that showcase, you know, and then the late Nintendo president at the time, Satoru Iwata, was, you know, talking about the Wii U, and he says, oh, I was talking with Sakurai, and we want to, they're going to make a Super Smash Brothers game for both Nintendo 3DS and Wii U. And then we had to wait for three years, I think, for the game, because when he first talked about it at E3 2011, it sounded like they didn't even start development yet, because he said, well, we'll get to it when Sakurai gets finished with Kid Icarus Uprising. So I guess part of it, because they announced Smash Ultimate, like, what, like, earlier year this year? Like, right before E3 this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, they announced it before E3, but they also stated that Sakurai was working on Ultimate while he was working on Smash 4. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, you know, he, he said, yeah, or when Sakurai was talking, he was like, yeah, I was working on this while I was working on Smash 4. So it's been in development for quite a while at this point. It's just, they announced it this in the beginning, in the first quarter of this year, like, I think, I want to say, like, March they announced it. Because um, that's what, yeah. Yes. It was somewhere between then and E3. I can't specifically remember. If somebody yeah, in my comment section remembers, please let us know. But yeah, I, d I think that was part of the reason. Like, I kind of find it funny because we first heard of the Switch back in like October 2016. I mean, I know there were the reports, oh, it's going to be called Codename and X, but Nintendo officially announced it's the Nintendo Switch back in October 2016, and they didn't say a peep about another Smash. Like, it was just a kind of thing. I think there was a rumor that that they were going to bring over the Wii U Smash, but of course that's not happening as far as we know, and it probably won't ever happen. So do you think part of it this time is they know that we've just been waiting ever since Smash for Wii U? So, you know, we're going to announce Smash Ultimate the year it's coming out and released later that year. Do you think that was part of, you know, why they didn't want to keep us hanging? Um... I don't know because Sakurai never intended Smash to go past Melee. Yeah. Melee was supposed to be the last IP. Mm -hmm. And I guess because they released Brawl and they released the Wii U, it set a precedent that every new console would have a new Smash game. So the fact that everyone knew there was going to be a new console coming out, or in console slash handheld, we didn't know at the time, I guess Sakurai's like, I should probably develop a game for this console, so. He probably started working on it around the same time when they finally, or when they finally announced, yeah, we have a Switch. Or at least when they, when he knew that, oh yeah, Nintendo's coming out with this thing called Codename NX, which would be called yeah. Switch. I definitely heard of that. I watched um, Gaming Historian. Do you watch Gaming Historian on YouTube? No. Yeah, it's a really amazing guy, and he did a two-part video talking about the history of Super Smash Brothers, and I definitely remember. I think he said that Sakurai once said that when he made Melee and Brawl, he when he made those games, he was under the mindset of, of okay, these will be the final Smash games I will ever make. Because at the time, he was unsure if he was going to direct Super Smash Ultimate, partially because of the tendonitis in his arm. You heard about that, right? Yeah. All right. So... I don't know, I just kind of thought that it would just become apparent to Sakurai. Like, I could understand him thinking, well, okay, they want a Smash, you know, sequel for... Uh, they want, you know, Melee to come out, and I'll just do that. But I would I would have thought that after Brawl came out, like, he was, he would at least get be thinking that they're going to ask me to helm another Smash game again. And I know oh, that Sakurai works super hard. Like, I don't support those tweets that... At or saying he could just go retired or you don't deserve to take a break and things like that. Now nah, those people are just mad that they're not getting what they wanted. And then if I recall correctly, I think what happened was with Smash 4 for the Wii U and 3DS, Sakurai actually never intended to make the game. Mm -hmm. But Iwana came out and said they're making a new Smash game, so I guess I, I believe, I don't remember, I need to look this back up again, that Sakurai said, okay, fine, I'll help work on the game, because otherwise I think they're going to develop the game without him. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want 
his the creation to not have his, his work in it because it's his baby. Like just like Kirby's his baby. Yeah. I don't think he wanted the game to go out with without him working on it in some aspects. So he's like, fine, I'll make this game. And after that, it's like, whatever, I guess I'll keep continuing making games, and that's how Smash Ultimate came out. Mm-hmm. I remember in the ca- in the Gaming Historian video, he mentioned in the case of Brawl, when Iwata was showing off the Wii, he mentioned the desire for a new Smash game, and Sakurai was actually watching from the audience, and he was like, what? what? They're going to make another Smash? And then Iwata called him in for a meeting after the conference. And in the case of the Wii U and 3DS game, I still remember, like, Iwata said, oh, a few months ago, I was talking to Sakura about ideas for new games, and he suggested, what if we made Smash for Wii U and 3DS? Like, that's what I heard in the case of which Smash game came as a surprise to him, which one was the one he supposedly spat out. I mean... I don't know if I'd suspect a lot of, oh, he made that up just to get Sakurai to come back. I mean, do you think that it's possible Wada just no, said that? or No, I'm pretty sure he actually meant that he, they were going to make a new Smash game with or without Sakurai. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I guess because uh, he evidently looked very tired when he announced it. It's like, oh, I had to work on this. And he said that he was working a lot of overtime. So I'm I'm pretty sure that Iwata was going to make the game with or without Sakurai's like permission mm-hmm. or like his help. So yeah, I mean I could definitely see that in the case of Brawl, the Wii U and 3DS because of that Wii U presentation, it's kind of head scratching to me. I guess you know as far as his it was definitely a little rushed because comparative to like Brawl for instance there are a lot of like bugs and game breaking stuff in the beginning of Smash 4 I mean yes granted there are always going to be bugs glitches and whatnot that people find and abuse but Smash 4 I felt like there are a little bit too many and like the game felt super unbalanced but then again Brawl was kind of broken Meta Knight being absolutely retarded having his own tier in the competitive scene hmm yeah, it's those kind of things that I didn't necessarily pick up on. The only reason I didn't really like the other, the Smash for Wii U and 3DS games was because I kind of just felt like they're, they're more polished versions of Brawl. And I know there was a lot of controversy. Like, I remember when they first announced Ultimate, there was even debate of, is this a new game or is this not? But the confirmation that it was a new game was in the first trailer for Smash Ultimate, you know, when they showed that the Splatoon characters were going to be in the game. They said something along the lines of original game coming from Nintendo at the very end of the trailer. So, I don't know. Are you getting that feeling with Ultimate? Like, does it just feel like, oh, it's just the Wii U game? Even though they said it's an original game, does it just feel like the Wii U game just put on a Switch screen? No, not at all. They completely changed a lot of aspects about the game, so it does not feel anything like a port. The people who think it's a port still are absolutely out of their mind. <laughs> um, do you think you could explain further about what you mean? All right. Uh, so in a competitive standpoint, a lot has changed. So there's, an, there's a, um, a mechanic called perfect shielding, where if you hit shield on the frame, that with that a hitbox, or that when someone throws a move and you shield it, nearly your shield takes some damage, right? Mm-hmm. Perfect shielding is if you hit shield, the shield button, at the same time where the move is supposed to connect with you, mm-hmm. you block it, you don't take any shield stun, and you can act immediately. Mm-hmm. In Smash Ultimate, they got rid of that. It's a little bit different now. So instead, parrying is if you let go of shield on the frame that the move connects, which is a little bit harder because the way perfect shielding works in Smash 4 is that, say, this is the ball, right? Mm-hmm. And you're right here. Mm-hmm. As long as you hit shield while the move's between you and the edge of your bubble, it'll count. But in Smash Ultimate, if you release shield too early, you're going to get hit. Mm-hmm. If you release it too late, you're still going to get your shield smacked and you're going to take shield damage or whatnot. So it makes it a little bit harder and kind of less shield heavy because a lot of people love to just kind of spam, walk and like spam shield and eventually it's perfect, it'll perfect shield something. And this one is a little bit more riskier because the parrying mechanic is a little bit different as well mm-hmm. in the regards where if you parry someone, they experience what's known as end lag, or more end lag. So when you throw a move at those, those like, you kind of, so like, say for instance, Gandor's F-Smash. He throws his elbow out, 
and then you can't act for a while. Mm -hmm. If he gets parried while doing his forward smash, he now will have more end leg than he normally would, and that's a little bit different in the game. So it's kind of a higher risk, high reward type thing, where in Smash 4, if you perfect shield something, you weren't guaranteed to punish, but you weren't also going to get... You also... Watch my call. You weren't losing any shield pressure, and you, 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 or your shield wouldn't be in more risk of breaking. Well, on Ultimate, it's more of either you let go too early, you get hit, or you still take the damage on your shield, or you can get the better punish. But it, there's more risk... More, there's more risk for reward in this in this scenario, as well as like the movement is a lot different. So in Smash Four, when you're dashing, mm -hmm. running, you cannot immediately tilt or do like a jab out of it, or even the smash attack. If you input any action, or if you hit a or yeah any action, you would always do it either a dash attack or the site or one of your angled specials. You can never do a neutral special out of a run. Or you can never do jab out of the run. You can never do F smash out of or sport smash out of the run. You can never do a tilt out of a run. Smash ultimate, you can do any action out of a run, no matter what. You can run and shield. You can run and do a smash attack. You can run and do a tilt. You can run and do a neutral special, which makes the game a lot different because now people have a lot have access to a lot more of their options out of the time. And at the same time, a lot of people have better movement because in Smash Ultimate, a lot of characters feel faster. Robin is the slowest character in Smash Four, like hands down, slower than Ganondorf. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But in Smash, in Smash Ultimate, people have a lot of it's, the video clips or the videos and like the tournaments that have been seen. It's very evident a lot of characters have a lot more movement, has a lot more freedom of movement in the game. So that's completely different in that aspect as well. And at the same time, there are a lot of changes. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of changes within characters. Some characters are really good now that used to be really bad, and some characters that are really bad now that used to be really good. For instance, my character is Zero Suit Samus. In Smash Four, she's considered like top seven, top ten right now. In Smash Ultimate, she's been complete, or her idea is the same, but the way they changed her moves make her a very lackluster character, to say the least. At least right now. We don't know too much yet because we haven't put, had our hands on the game long enough. We haven't been able to use what her controls and just kind of mess around with the character. But from what people have tested out so far, she is pretty far from her former glory. At the same time, Pichu in Melee is god-awful. He hurt himself, died really early. In Smash Ultimate, from what people have been saying... Pichu is actually pretty good right now. Oh. So this is, it's not even like the same. And like other characters have like some of their moves changed. Like for instance, Dr. Mario's Dare in Smash 4 is a multi-hit. He now has a spike. And the same thing for Pikachu. His down air used to be a one-hit move that would kind of send send you in or in a certain direction. But in Smash Ultimate, he will now spike you with the move. So it characters have been changed, their hitboxes are different, the way they, they launch you are different, so. This is nowhere close to a port. The amount of effort that has been put into it makes it, like, if you think this is a port, something is very wrong with your definition of a port. They are the same characters, yes, but there are, the core aspects or the core engine of the game has been completely changed and it feels nothing like Smash 4. Yes, maybe some fundamentals and, like, the base, like, knowledge, some of it might transfer over, but there's still a lot that we have to relearn about the game. <laughs> yeah, so that's definitely uh, really good to hear. It's why I wanted you to come on just to explain it, it all in a way that I possibly couldn't. So, in speaking of all the modes in Ultimate, are you personally happy with them? Like, probably the most notable one that I could see is that new adventure mode. I think it's called the World of Light. Where, yeah. Yeah, um, what do you personally... Because I know people were bummed that there was no adventure mode in Smash for Wii U and I think Soccer said the reason is because he doesn't want people uploading the cutscenes online. Apparently that was a big problem with Brawl but now that they're bringing it back with um, Smash Ultimate which honestly that was one of the things I really wanted because I remember Suspace Emissary even though I thought it was kind of long it was definitely a really epic um crazy adventure mode i remember me and my sister my sister especially she's much better at smash compared to me and i remember she spent a long time getting through it but what do you personally think of this new world of light mode um i don't really have a stance on it i'm not against it i'm not for it it is pretty exciting and it might be a good way to unlock characters and a lot of people are excited for it because it adds another story aspect and if i recall correctly in a similar situation with Ice Climbers, the reason why there wasn't an adventure mode 
in Smash for Wii U and 3DS is because the 3DS's capacity wasn't able to handle it at the time. Because mm, when they announced the Smash for 3DS, there wasn't the 3DS XL or the new 3DS. And the original 3DS couldn't handle having ice climbers. And I believe that's a similar reason why there was no adventure mode planned for it, because the 3DS didn't have access or didn't have the hardware to maybe run an adventure mode. And Sakurai said he didn't want to put something in one game that wasn't in the other that would change all his play. Because if you had Ice Climbers only in the Wii U version, then people who have the 3DS are missing out, and vice versa. The, the, there was the Smash Run and Smash Tour that were swapped around, but that wasn't really a core aspect of the game, so I don't think they cared too much about that. But I feel like that's why there wasn't an adventure mode. I don't know if there was an official statement as to why there wasn't, besides that he didn't want people uploading trailers and whatnot, but as far as I could tell, it probably was a, a thing to do with the fact that the original 3DS couldn't have, didn't have the hardware for it. Mm, yeah, I see. I definitely remember, because when Smash for 3DS came out, I was still using the first version of the 3DS XL, and then I got the um, 3DS... Um, the new one, the one I'm holding right now, because that one broke, and I definitely know in that game, I think it's more that rather than, like, taking advantage of the new 3DS's features that the old 3DS can advantage, couldn't use, let me just rephrase what I'm saying, it kind of just took advantage of features where if you played that on the old 3DS, it wouldn't be detrimental. Like, I know you could do smash attacks using the C-Stick, and the game definitely loads a lot quicker compared to the version 3DS. And I know that's definitely the one thing, because I remember Smash for 3DS took quite a bit longer to load. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it was using as much horsepower from the 3DS, you know, any that it had, to make the game run. I mean, did you have that kind of experience? No, uh, I started off with an 3DS XL, so I didn't have that much of an issue with loading the game and whatnot. Yeah, that was a big, a key aspect as to why a lot of designs happened for the game. Yeah, so I think that's definitely one of the reasons why Sakurai didn't want to include in adventure mode. It's kind of interesting though, because if the 3DS couldn't handle it, do you think maybe he could have put it in the Wii U version, or it would be just such a large like omission that? it would be kind of unfair to people who got the 3DS. Um, if the 3DS originally had the or the hardware to do it, I'm pretty sure Sakurai would have included things that he didn't or decided to omit from the from the various versions. But unfortunately, at the time, the new, like I said, the new 3DS wasn't announced yet when the Smash game came out and when they were developing it. So it's a little unfortunate that it happened, but eh, can't can't change it. Yeah. I actually look up um for my viewers the I'm pretty I'm certain I could find articles where Sakurai said that he, at least his explicit answer was oh I don't want people uploading them on the internet but who knows if I come across any that say you know oh he didn't want to put them because of the 3ds's limitations I'll be sure to include them down below in the description so I think we pretty much covered like everything in terms of the whole character controversy and we even went to the differences like talked a bit about the adventure mode um is there any um final thoughts you would like to say evan regarding smash ultimate <sighs> any hopes or issues uh not really my only hope is that they have a better idea of how to balance the game because at the beginning of Smash for Wii U, the balance patches weren't the best. Some signs were questionable. And I hope they don't have another situation like where there's like a sprawl Meta Knight or the Smash 4 pre patched like first ever good Bayonetta because those characters are whack. Mm. So that's my only hope is that the, the design team and the balance team have a better idea of how to actually make the game more balanced. In regards to the, anything else, other than that, I'm just kind of excited to see what characters are coming out. Uh, I'm not sure how other people feel about that. There's the Fighter Pass where you pay 25 bucks, I think. Yeah, 25 dollars to get five yeah. DLC packs. Yes, I believe. Or is it 20? I forgot. I honestly yeah, don't remember. Yeah, it's 25. It's 25. Yeah, yeah. And you don't remember who? You don't know who the DLC characters are yet. So, I'm going to get it just because I'm going. When I go to tournaments, if you take your tournament. Or you're set up to tournaments, you can get a discount, but the, your 
setup needs to have everything unlocked. Mm. So if I'm going to bring in the, the, the tournaments, I'm going to get it anyway. So might as well get the pass now rather than spend like separate or $6 separate on every other character. Yeah. Given how, especially in the last Nintendo Direct, Sakurai mentioned a lot of things that are coming after the game launches. You know, like he talked about, oh, we'll be working on DLC when, you know, development is finished. He mentioned there was like an online service, wasn't there, where he said, oh, that's where you can put your gameplay footage and things like that. Yeah, that was the Miiverse. Yeah, you you could I mean, Bruce, you could get your character or matches uploaded to YouTube or just kind of show clips and drawings and whatnot. Yeah, I still don't think it was own it was its own thing. I guess it was kind of Meverse like, but I don't recall. Like I just recall that it's a place for people to upload the footage for Smash. So I don't know. That's where I'm kind of nervous in terms of maybe they'll patch things up. You know what I'm saying? Because. You know, Sakurai's emphasizing, oh yeah, but there's still more to come. So I'm wondering, does that mean we're gonna there's gonna be a patch for especially people who play to notice, hey, it's kind you know, there's some things they need to touch up? Uh no. Yeah, there's definitely gonna be patches. Uh I don't see why they would not do patches. Especially as they've more more so than normal have recognized the competitive scene. Because I remember before Reggie said, or came out and said that, yeah, they don't really care about the competitive scene at all. So we shall see how that works out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that definitely wraps things up. So definitely excited for Smash Ultimate myself. I have a feeling that a certain somebody that's, you know, a certain cousin of my family is going to get it for her Christmas and tent. <laughs> if he's watching this video. So I guess we'll end things off here. So thank you, Evan, for coming on. Would you like to plug your Twitch channel here while we finish? Sure, yeah. Uh, so at the moment, I don't stream too much Smash content, but when Ultimate comes out, I'll probably be doing a lot more of that. So you can follow me at Twitter uh, at ArmaZCF or on Twitch, the same tag, ArmaZCF. I'll be streaming a lot of Smash when it come, Ultimate when it comes out. And I'll also be tweeting about tournaments, things that are happening. If you're interested in the competitive scene, you can hit me up on either platform, if I'm streaming on Twitch or on just Twitter at any time, and I'll help you, like, I'll help you find, like, a Facebook group, maybe a little Twitter group, or I'll tell you, like, yeah, if you're in SoCal specifically, I can show you, or I can tell you where the tournaments are being hosted, what time, how to get there, and whatnot. So if you're interested in, in the competitive scene, it's a fun place. It's a little bit hard to get into, so if you don't have the patience for it, Probably isn't the best, but if you're interested, definitely check it out. It's fun. You can learn a lot of stuff. That's how I got into the game. Because when I started playing Smash, it was on my friend's 3DS. I didn't own one at the time. I played Robin and Lucina. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can do this character. So I looked up the videos, and I found a player named Nairo, who at the time played Robin and Pit. And through him, I found the competitive Smash scene, and that's how I got ran where it's gay. So it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone's going to want to sit down, play the game for like hours, find out what the character can do, optimize, and all that jazz. But it's still fun to watch, and you can always learn about your character more without having to actually sit down for hours and just stare at your screen, mashing buttons all day. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, I don't know, do you think maybe you, me, and Patrick could come up with some kind of smash match when Ultimate comes out? It definitely can happen. I'm not too sure how, how Patrick would feel about that, because... The skill between me and him is is uh, pretty pretty big. There is a there is a big gap between us, so I'm not sure how that would bode entirely. But I would be down to do some type of special fit content, whether it be just me watching and commentating the match, or maybe like sitting down with both of you guys and trying to help you like explain or explain the characters to you, kind of help you get an idea of how to better play them. Yeah, you're probably going to have to explain to both of us since it sounds like the three of us vary in skill level quite a bit. I mean, like I said, and it's funny, you've been playing Smash for like a few years now and you're playing in tournaments. And I've been playing Smash since I was a really little kid, like five years old, but I still play really casually. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it's all in good fun, of course, but, you know, yeah. help is definitely welcome. So, yeah, no, it's everyone's cup of tea. Uh... I find the competitive scene fun, so I do. I still play casually. Mm -hmm. There are times where I'll just kind of go 
I will play my friends, just grab random characters. I'll a lot of the times when I'm playing with people who aren't competitive in the game, I'll just hit random button. Mm-hmm. Because it makes it more fun for people. Because I don't, I play a lot of characters. I know have to play half the cast at like a decently high level. But there's certain other characters where I just have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just, I have an idea, I just can't play them. Which is like, uh. <laughs> so. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think we'll definitely end it here. So thank you, Evan, for coming on. No problem. Thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for the people watching, um, please be sure to leave your guys' thoughts down below. If you're excited for Smash Brothers Ultimate, if you have your concerns. And, you know, please please be, you know, please um, um, talk about it in a very healthy way. You guys can be really critical of Smash if you want. Just don't be as toxic as those people are with Sakura. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys later. And again, it was nice to meet you, Evan. See you later. Nice to meet you, too. All right, see ya. See ya. Hey, guys. Be sure to like this Blood Moon Bobby video if you enjoyed it. Please share this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment. Be sure to ring the notification bell to be notified about my latest upload. Follow me on my social media pages at Blood Moon Bobby to find out about what I'll be covering next and for more of my opinions. Thanks for watching.